Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next topic in vascular pathology is Kaposi sarcoma. So Kaposi sarcoma is actually a blood vessel tumor which originates from endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. The disease shows a strong association with human herpes virus 8 and HIV virus. Human herpes virus is present in almost 95% of Kaposi sarcoma cases and HIV plays a role in progression of the tumor. So Kaposi sarcoma is divided into four further subtypes on basis of their demographic distribution and cause of the disease. The first of all is the classical or European Kaposi sarcoma. It is also known as chronic Kaposi sarcoma. The second is the endemic or African Kaposi sarcoma. And third is epidemic or HIV AIDS associated Kaposi sarcoma. The last one is iatrogenic or transplant associated Kaposi sarcoma. Iatrogenic means occurring due to a medical procedure since transplant is a medical procedure. So first of all, there is classical or European Kaposi sarcoma. The disease is prevalent amongst the European and Mediterranean populations, most commonly Ashkenazi Jews. And the age for the classical Kaposi sarcoma is usually old age. The disease is characterized by the formation of macular patches and plaques on the extremities. The second is the endemic or African Kaposi sarcoma. And as the name shows, it is more common in the South African population. And unlike the European Kaposi sarcoma, this one is more common in the children. And rather than involving the extremities, it involves the visceral organs and often lungs. The third is the transplant associated Kaposi sarcoma, also known as iatrogenic Kaposi sarcoma. And as the name is showing, it occurs in the transplant cases. Since the transplant patients are placed on immunosuppressive therapy, this one is very aggressive rather than the others and it involves lymph nodes and the mucosal membranes such as inside the mouth, gums and soft and hard palate. Since the disease is driven by the immunosuppressive therapy, the attenuation or omission of immunosuppressive therapy minimizes the disease but again the patient is more prone towards transplant rejection. The major growing cause of Kaposi sarcoma worldwide and most commonly in the United States is HIV associated Kaposi sarcoma. The disease has a strong association with the HIV infection and it is common amongst the homosexual men. The disease involves lymph nodes, mucosal membranes and visceral organs. So coming on towards the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of Kaposi sarcoma consists of first phase which is development of the tumor. So the basic factor that transforms the normal cells into new plastic cells is the infection with human herpes virus 8 or also known as Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus because of its association with Kaposi sarcoma. So once the cancer has developed, the progression of the tumor is driven by a cofactor. In HIV associated Kaposi sarcoma, the cofactor is identified to be HIV. But in other three subtypes, the cofactor for the progression of the disease is unidentified. So the developmental phase is accomplished by human herpes virus 8 and progression is caused by HIV infection. So first of all there is human herpes virus 8 infection. At first not all but few of the endothelial cells but in later stage of the disease almost all the endothelial cells carry the infection. So HHV8 can either cause a latent infection or a lattic infection. Latent infection means that the infection is present but it does not produce any signs and symptoms. And lytic infection means the infection is causing the damage to endothelial cells. So in latent infection, the human herpes virus 8 produces certain proteins which inhibit P53 proteins. Just to recall, P53 is a tumor suppressor gene and P53 protein under normal situations induces apoptosis. So the inhibition of P53 protein results in loss of apoptosis which favors proliferation of endothelial cells. Moreover, the viral proteins also activate or upregulate cyclin D which again is a proliferating factor. So the inhibition of P53 proteins and upregulation of cyclin D proteins results in excessive growth of endothelial cells. 
Moreover, in lytic infections, the T cells are recruited to the site. And just to remember, these T cells are affected with HIV. So on one hand, the human herpes virus 8 is causing proliferation of endothelial cells. And on the other hand, in lytic infections, the cytokines which are released by the infected T cells also activate vascular endothelial growth factor, which promotes the endothelial proliferation, hence causing increased growth. Both of these factors ultimately lead to the formation of a tumor. So coming on towards the morphology, the Kaposi sarcoma has actually three stages. The first is the patch stage, in which the Kaposi sarcoma appears as a patch on the skin. This patch is either reddish or purplish in color and it forms a macule. The macules are flat and have a different color from the surrounding tissue. The Kaposi sarcoma patch is composed of irregularly dilated vascular spaces. And of course, due to the presence of infection, inflammatory cells such as macrophages, plasma cells and lymphocytes are also present. The second phase is the formation of plaque or Kaposi sarcoma plaque stage. This here is a plaque present on the left hand of the patient. And these are raised lesions. They have violet color and in most cases they are less than 1 cm size. Again they are composed of dilated vascular channels. And here in this case the blood vessel is surrounded by the spindle cells along with the inflammatory cells. The third and the final stage is Kaposi sarcoma nodule. These are the nodules which as you can see are raised and they are greater than 1 cm in size. These nodules can often be ulcerated. Again they have a narrow lumen and along with the spindle cells they have red blood cells as well which has extravasated from the blood vessels. So coming on towards the histological features. The first of all is the pattern and the tumor cells in this case form a fascicular pattern. Fascicular pattern means that the neoplastic cells are arranged in the form of bundles. The next character is defining the tumor cells. So in Kaposi sarcoma, the neoplastic cells are plump or spindle cells. Plump means round and the spindle cells are actually derived from the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. As you can see here, there are multiple spindle cells present in the histology. Moreover, in addition to the tumor cells, inflammatory cells such as macrophages, plasma cells and lymphocytes are also present along with the extravasated red blood cells. These red blood cells typically give the color to patches, plaques and nodules. The fourth point is the specific character of the tumor. In Kaposi sarcoma, intracellular as well as extracellular hyaline globes are also present along with the hemosiderin often present in the inflammatory cells such as macrophages. The fifth point is about the mitotic bodies which are always present in the malignant tumor. And the sixth point is focal necrosis. Although focal necrosis is a hallmark of malignancy, but in this case the necrosis is absent. The reason for the absence of necrosis is that these tumors are well supplied with the blood. The patients typically present with the skin lesions on the extremities, mouth and genitals. The lesions might be at any stage such as patches, plaque or nodules. The lesions might also be present in the oral mucosa, particularly in gingiva and pellet. The lesions present in the oral mucosa are more prone towards bleeding. The visceral lesions might be present in GIT or often in the respiratory tract. The lesions in the GIT might cause diarrhea, often they might cause constipation or perrectal bleeding. And the lesions in the respiratory tract cause blood in the sputum or coughing out of blood and often severe bouts of coughing. The diagnosis of Kaposi sarcoma is based on the clinical features of the disease and the gold standard for the diagnosis of Kaposi sarcoma is histological study of the biopsy. There are many treatment options including cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen, surgical removal of the patches or nodules and radiotherapy and chemotherapy are often used in case they are beneficial for the patient.
In case of HIV associated Kaposi sarcoma, antiretroviral drugs are used to treat HIV infections and they also cause treatment of the Kaposi sarcoma. Unlike other three types of Kaposi sarcoma, hydrogenic or transplant associated Kaposi sarcoma is very difficult to treat because the attenuation or omission of immunosuppression therapy results in graft rejection by the host. So this concludes our discussion about Kaposi sarcoma. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.